From mind-blowing convergent evolution, blending mammalian, reptilian, and avian features, to diapausal pregnancy, monotremes and marsupials have fascinated scientists for centuries. With much still unknown, here is some of what we do know. Roughly 200 million years ago, a large group of vertebrates called the synapsids gave rise to the mammalian class we know today. Firstly, the egg-laying monotremes, 20 million years later, marsupials and placentals. Reproduction is one of the primary differences between these three mammalian groups. Here we take a closer look at the physiological adaptations of monotreme and marsupial reproduction. Like monotremes, marsupials retained an epipubic pelvis bone from their egg-laying ancestors, allowing both to give birth to underdeveloped young. As marsupials are widespread throughout Australia, breeding seasons vary due to climate and location. As a response to adverse conditions, kangaroos have developed the ability to pause embryonic development, allowing populations to increase during favourable conditions. Monotremes' breeding season lasts for three to four months from late winter for both the platypus and the short beaked echidna. For echidnas, courtship involves a train of 1 to 10 males. This can last for as long as 6 weeks. Echidnas reproduce once every 2 to 3 years, whereas kangaroos can be nursing up to 4 young at a time, one at foot, one in pouch, one in utero, and one at early stage of gestation. As one joey passes through development, each sibling follows. To allow for this multi-stage development, female marsupials have 3 vaginas and 2 uteri. Most male marsupials have a bifurcated penis, meaning the penis splits into two prongs. This is to increase chances of fertilization. Like reptiles and birds, monotremes possess a true cloaca, meaning that sexual, urinary, and digestive fluids use the same opening. The female echidna has two ovaries. The male's penis is roughly seven centimeters, symmetrical, and includes four rosettes. Interestingly, like many bird species, the female platypus has only one operating ovary, on the left. Therefore, the male's penis has adapted asymmetrically. Marsupials' pouches are specialised to each group. Kangaroos open at the top, which help regulate temperature, whereas a wombat's pouch opens to the rear, enabling the mother to burrow without filling her pouch. The short-beaked echidna has a pouch that forms from the abdominal muscles, whereas the platypus is pouchless. It isn't clear whether the pouch structure evolved independently in the echidna, or if perhaps it is a trait that has been lost to the platypus. Both echidna and platypus fill burrows for their young. The platypus uses the burrow for incubation, whereas the echidna uses it for rest while incubating eggs in her pouch. Echidna's eggs incubate for up to 24 days, the platypus only 10. These monotrim eggs are oval shaped and up to around 16 millimeters long. Female kangaroo species are pregnant for 21 to 38 days. When the joey is born, it travels independently to the pouch where it develops for another 120 to 450 days. Marsupial newborns weigh between 4 and 830 milligrams. Both marsupials and monotremes are born as pinkies, resembling an underdeveloped embryo. Inside the egg, monotremes develop an egg tooth to break outside the shell. When hatched, they are only 15 millimeters long. As mammals, both groups produce milk. Marsupials permanently attach to a teat for the first month or so, feeding only every few days. This then increases with development. Unlike kangaroos, wombats and koalas generally only have one joey at a time. Platypus mothers will sweat milk from a patch on the abdomen for the young to lick. Echidna puggles access milk via areolas. These are specialised hairs in the pouch. Once hatched, echidna puggles are carried in a pouch for roughly 50 days. Puggles are then left inside the burrow for the mother to return to. Once old enough, the mother never returns. Monotremes and marsupials face the same environmental challenges. And although have many different physical characteristics, they both retain the ability to give birth to underdeveloped young. As this reproductive strategy is greater in energy efficiency, this unique feature is believed to be a result of the Australian climate.